In Britain today, there's a battle taking place. A shoplifter strikes every 12 seconds. If I like it, then it's mine, isn't it? It's mine. I've already claimed it before it's even got off the shelf. They pocket an incredible £6 million pounds of goods every day. I worked it out to about 3,000 shoplifters of getting away with. But shoplifters beware, there's an army of store detectives waiting to pounce. If I just move this across here, I can see down that aisle. You just like, go like a bloodhound, you can't take your eyes off them for a moment. We're going to show you both sides in action, exposing the tricks they use in this high street war. People will take tags off with their teeth. The shoplifters themselves tell us how and why they do it. I just come across. He didn't walk out with two bottles, even though a security guard had seen us. I wouldn't look at what I was picking up. I would just... That's all I would be doing. So who is winning this game of cat and mouse? <laughs> Being played out every day in Britain's stores. I come to work to earn my money. Why should they get it the easy way? That's how I see it. Up and down the country's high streets, men and women are slipping away from shops without paying a penny. I stole my hair. <laughs> I stole this jacket, my shoes, this ring. If I ran out of makeup, I'd just go in the boots. I love that, I love that, I love that. It is just a normal part of life for a lot of people. My underwear, I stole. My stud on my face my tongue bar. It's happening all of the time now. It's non-stop. It's become an epidemic, I suppose. So is shoplifting really a national disease? In 2013, while total crime levels fell, shoplifting was actually on the rise. It now cost the retail industry £2.2 billion every year. With numbers this large, shoplifters come in all shapes and sizes. Some you'd expect. Take this young couple. They look like they're up to no good. Sure enough, he's nicked her some new underwear. What about this lad in a shell suit? Looking somewhat suspicious as he helps himself to something for tea. But not all shoplifters wear hoodies and hang around convenience stores. Nothing unusual, you'd think, about this respectable group of bird watchers searching for their next expensive purchase. But all's not as it seems. There's a shoplifter at work here too. Having chosen what he wants, this chap waits until the salesman is distracted and then slips £1,600 worth of binoculars into his pocket. In wealthy Surrey, this young couple pop into a hairdresser's. But they're not booking an appointment. As she watches on, he slips some hair straighteners under his coat and they casually walk away. In fact, it seems just about anyone is capable of shoplifting. Even if it's someone who's just slipped into the habit. <laughs> to catch a shoplifter, the store detectives need to know what to look out for. The most common type is the casual opportunist. Meet 23-year-old student Carla. I'm not going to sit here and give you a sob story like I, I shoplift to feed my six starving kids because that's not the case. I shoplift because I can't afford it. Plus, I like to get things for free. I think free, free stuff is the best. You enjoy it more, innit? On the streets of West London, Carla's out window shopping. She's been stealing since she was 13. I shoplift about three, four times a week. Just little bits here and there, you know, like little bits I need for the house, like bin bags or 
floor detergent. I pay for the stuff, which I know I can't steal. And the stuff that I can steal, I'll steal them. Yeah, there's lots of stuff to take from here. I mean, right now, I'm not geared up to go, but, um, yeah, there is quite a lot of stuff to take around here. You've got to make sure you know where people's eyes are, make sure you're not in their view. You know what? When it comes to shoplifting, price doesn't, doesn't have a say in it. It's just what I look and see that I like. If I like it, then it's mine, isn't it? It's mine. I've already claimed it before it's even got off the shelf. It's mine. <laughs> At the other end of the spectrum from Carla is the shoplifting professional. They steal to order and it's a full-time job. Stealing in bulk and targeting goods they can sell on for a big profit. With a high resale value, clothes are a firm favourite of the professionals. Christian arrived from Romania three years ago to work as a builder, but soon realized he could make ten times as much money as a full-time shoplifter. I used to work 50 pounds per day. In my first day, yeah, I, I make 300 pounds only in a few hours, two, three hours. I will show you my favorite shop. It's down there on the corner. They give me a lot of money. We got nice stuff there. For professionals like Christian, shoplifting can be a very lucrative business. This year, I made around 50,000 pounds. I have a good life, going out with friends, spending a lot of money. And Christian's not alone. Yeah, there are a lot of people who are doing this, and they've never been caught. I've got some friends who they never, never been called. Alongside the opportunists and professionals, there are the desperate. Willing to take risks, this group steal to survive or feed an addiction. I was just drinking all the time. And then it escalated from there. And then I got off the drink, onto the drugs, and obviously I had to shoplift more to feed me habit. Could be anything from once a day to four times a day. I couldn't make anything from a tenner to a hundred quid. For 36-year-old alcoholic Darren, shoplifting also became an addiction. It's been many times I've been just walking somewhere to go meet somebody, and I found myself in a shop shoplifting. I think the best way to explain it is it's like some people, you know, get up and go in the shower. I get up and I go shoplifting. I rounded it off over the years to about 3,000 shopliftings, and I've been caught and convicted for 50, you know, and I usually go to prison for it. So who's on the front line protecting us against this army of thieves? Determined to fight back, the shops have recruited their own army, undercover store detectives who know every shoplifting trick in the book. Some stores, you know, on an eight-hour shift, you can catch three or four. So me catch two. It's very rare you go over day without having a blank day when there's nothing happens. I come to work to earn my money. Why should they get it the easy way? That's how I see it. They work incognito and operate where the thieves are hitting the hardest. You've got to be very sly, very sly. Stay tucked away until you need to paint. Shoplifters, yeah, they're like rodents. They will come back. You know, it's a job to them as well. Shoplifting is a job to them. People don't remember that. It is an actual job, yeah. That's what they get up and do every single day of the week. Same as I get up every single day of the week, I go and catch them. That's, it's, it's a game, it's like cat and mouse. Coming up, once battle commences in the high street, what tricks do the shoplifters use? You get people like me who would just walk in, fill a basket up, walk straight back out, and nothing, nothing offers. They used to experience, put the bottles down my sleeves. And can the store detectives keep one step ahead? This guy going in the shop with a hood, suspicious to me. That's what I call suspicious. People will be as blatant and as brazen as to take tags off with their teeth. On the streets of our cities, there's a billion pound battle taking place. With 2.7 million retail crimes each year, stopping shoplifters is a huge struggle for the nation's store detectives especially as the thieves use all sorts of tricks. 
take this polite thief. He eventually finds what he wants, but doesn't want to pay. Others are more sophisticated, like this shoplifting regular. With a sling hidden under her skirt, capable of carrying a crate of cans. Every thief has their own favorite trick, which makes them even harder to stop. I used to experience to put the bottles down my sleeves. You stow it at the back when I was walking towards him, and then you just flip it round so it's at the front of my sleeve. Then I unzip my coat down to about halfway. So now I've got an area inside my coat, and then inside the shirt, well, put the meat in, put the razor blades in. I'll just pop it in my bag quickly and just walk around, carry on shopping. With such brazen techniques, the store detectives are constantly on their toes. There is no manual. You're not reading a script off, right? This is what you're looking out for. Every day is different, every single day. You know, every, every day I go to work, I learn something new. I learn, I learn a different way of shoplifting. So what are the key tricks of the lifter's trade? The technique the store detectives fear the most is a simple sledgehammer approach that works time and time again. The blatant grab and run. These three aren't prepared to let anything stand in their way. Not even an old lady will stop them. Or this thief in Glasgow. He's after some cigarettes. But as soon as they're in his hand, he scuppers without pain. It's the two minute in snatch and grab jobs. In a car job, that's the, that's the difficult ones. You know, in a shop, I could have like a thousand people in a shop at one time, but I've got to notify this person in two minutes, in and out. It's, it can get difficult, yeah. It basically happens in split seconds. Um, so we don't really know what's going on until like all of the commotion and then if they've got a call waiting outside there's nothing we can do about it apart from take the registration number if we can do that. If you're a store detective, the only way to catch a grab and run is to be in the right place at the right time. The buzzers went off. Check the cameras. There's this guy had three champagnes, just holding them like this and trying to run away with them. Half seven in the morning. Running attracts attention. The cooler headed thief has the bottle to walk. You can't look guilty, you can't be looking at the security guard too much to see if he's looking at you. You have to do it on the slide, like, yeah, what's we'll that over there? And while you're looking at over there, just make sure there isn't anyone that works in the shop and just kind of style it out. It's the blatant, see what I find gets you away with it, rather than the, the sneakiness, yeah? You get people like me who would just walk in, fill a basket up and walk straight back out, and nothing, nothing of it. Nothing, nothing of it at all. With so many eagle-eyed store detectives on the prowl, many shoplifters prefer to hide their stolen loot before trying to make their escape. It's the golden rule of the lifter. If you can't run with it, hide it. These women have found a novel place to conceal booze. One bottle, two bottles, three bottles more. Before leaving the shop, this crafty pair managed to slip nearly 250 pounds worth of alcohol up their skirts. Techniques are always changing, you know, and that's what we've got to be on our balls, you know. Some of them are, you know, use big baggy coats with extra pockets put into them, so pockets, extra compartments, what they've made themselves. I would usually fold the jeans down in half and then double them up and then put them round my waistline and then put my trousers and my belt round it and then took my jumper over. But sometimes trying to hide it can go wrong. If the hiding space is too small, you're asking for trouble. They'll conceal like an item underneath the jacket or something. And then they'll say they forgot to pay for it or they were going to pay for it once. I'll be like, why did you conceal it then? You've got baskets in front of the stores. Why put it underneath your jacket? 
And they'd be like, uh, uh, uh. That's when they stutter. To the seasoned store detective, a baggy coat or jacket is a dead giveaway. But there's one thing that doesn't stand out in a shop. On a day to day basis, more of these bags. They walk into a store, like, you know, nothing in the pockets, you know, just, 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 just a shell. And then uh, they'll go onto the item where they want to go onto the item where they want to steal. And then a little blue bag or a green bag or a yellow bag will come out of the pockets. And I just go up for it and I just walk out, hoping that no one sees them. Spying a new bottle of must have hairspray, this young shoplifter knows what to do. With the spray in her bag, it's time to add a little something extra. Hair straighteners. Leaving an empty box on the shelf, they go straight into the bag. Then to get their loot-filled bags out of the store, some shoplifters resort to all kinds of tricks. I would use the carrier bag from that shop, so then would think, oh, well, she's bought something from the shop, she's walking out the shop with something what she's bought from this shop. And obviously I've got something in the bag what is from that shop, but it's not paid for. It might have worked for Ashley, but years on the beat means an experienced store detective can tell the difference between a shopper and a shoplifter. <laughs> All day long, they're on it. He had a black, black, black bag in his hand, yeah, there was nothing in that black bag. He was ready to be pulled out when they go to the store and probably conceal or something, yeah. They're on it, they know they're on it. This guy going in the shop with a hood. Anyone what goes in the shop with a hood, suspicious to me. That's what I call suspicious. It's not just the shoplifters who've developed their own clever techniques. Store detectives are at it too. If I just move this across here, I've got enough gaps here, and I can see down that aisle. They're literally going to be looking like... OK, they're not going to be looking for little gaps where somebody could be looking through or anything like that. A little trick I used to do is when there was windows like this, and if it was dark outside and we thought there was a shoplifter on high price items, perfumes, we used to stand outside where the shoplifter couldn't see we very well and we used to watch in the store to see what they were doing. It is cat and mice. And if the cat wants the mice, he'll get it. Literally. With the store detectives watching, shoplifters have to use increasingly complex techniques to take what they want. When hiding goods isn't possible, they've got another trick up their sleeves. Distraction. This regular working guy is picking up something on his way home. But after distracting the clerk with a request from the stockroom, he grabs a little something extra. His timing's perfect, and the owner is none the wiser. It's like a magic trick, in a sense. It's like misdirection. Because uh, thieving is about misdirection to certain people. At one stage, I could take it when they were on the till, when they were working it, without them knowing that was how good I was. I've seen people using another person as a distraction technique while I was standing outside watching, um, and one of the other ones went into the window, grabbed a Dyson Hoover and carried it out. Um, obviously, I was standing outside, I seen it, so obviously they didn't get far. Hunting in teams makes it even easier to distract the staff. This group just looked like they're out for an afternoon shopping. But as one of them asks the owner a question, her partners in crime block his view. And the smallest member of the group can get to work. In seconds, a laptop is gone. A quick nod to check they have what they want. And the team leave. Distractions can be a nightmare. You know, one, one, especially if you've got a big store, at the one side of the store could be, you know, a bloke concealing meat, at the other store concealing coffee, you know, 
whoa, what's going on here, yeah? So you try and cover your areas, yeah, as well as cover your exits. But then the, the first one with the meat, you're putting the meat back. You're like, all right, mate, what's going on here? So you know, you wait, wait for him to go. You go down to the coffee, he's put that back. You're thinking, ha-ha, I've deterred him, I've deterred him, I've deterred him. They've gone out the door, and it's not only that until you walk past your, your risk areas and you have a look in your red routes, and you're like, oh, where's my razor blades gone? And you find out three of them was at work at the same time. This crafty duo in Scotland take distraction to a new level. One of them drops a bottle on the floor. The sound of broken glass lures the shopkeeper from her till. A glance to check the coast clear, and the thief slips in, grabbing cash. Sometimes even being a well-known shoplifter is enough to distract the staff. Back in the late 90s, I was that sort of like that prolific that every time I went in the shop, every store detected in the area was on my toes sort of thing, and it meant if I was on the first aisle, the booze aisle would be completely free. So all my mates could help themselves to whatever they wanted. And sometimes it's a family affair. This husband and wife team hit a petrol station in Derby. It all looks innocent enough. As he chats with the cashier, she browses. Another angle, another story. With the cashier's attention diverted, she's free to help herself. It's the ultimate technique. Teamwork, distraction, and a hidden pocket rolled into one. In the face of this plague of snatch, stash, and diversion, stores are turning to technology resorting to electronic tags and alarms as a new line of defence. Usually you find that the higher price items have the security tags across the bottom. This just works as a deterrent for the shoplifter. They'll usually they'll take it into an area and try and peel them off before concealing them and leaving the store. Fortunately for the security teams, the tags are hard to release. This young man seems to be struggling to get it off. He's persistent, but ultimately, he fails. People will be as blatant and as brazen as to take tags off with their teeth. People will burn tags off. They want that item, and they want it that bad, and they are that desperate that they will do whatever means necessary to take it. Security tags that they have on bottles, they're quite easy to get off as well. You know, they only take a little tug and it just comes straight off at the top of the bottle. This shoplifter's even desperate enough to try and cut the alarm in clear view. But just as the stores thought tags were the answer, the lifters fought back with the technology of their own. Like they call them magic bags. Foil wrapped around it in, from inside and that don't set the alarms off. Uh, two Romanians come in from out of town. They come in with a cardboard box. The box was lined with foil, and they just filled it with high-end spirits and then attempted to push the trolley out. The store detectives may be sharp, but the ongoing battle of the high street is far from won. The shoplifters will be always in the front of the security, yeah? And this is how it works. Oh, yeah, obviously they do get smarter. Because they learn from the mistakes. Coming up, what are the shoplifters after? I'll just steal anything that's not tied down. And just how far will they go? I would see I've stolen altogether about a good three to four hundred bottles of wine in two years. Across the country, there's a giant game of cat and mouse being played out on the streets of our city centres as shoplifters and shop detectives fight it out. A major headache for the detectives is that shoplifters will steal anything. There's no limit to how small or large they'll go. Anything that's not too big and bulky to carry out, they'll just steal anything that's not tied down. The determined shoplifter won't be put off by size. We had a gentleman come in with a 
on his own, walking around the shop, went onto the electrical section of one of the shops, picked up one of the trolley pieces, actually loaded a washing machine onto it and walked towards the door with it. In Northampton, these two guys have gone for something even bigger. They're trying to make off with one sofa and then another. Fortunately, the quick-witted manager saw it all, grabbing the sofas back in the nick of time. Some thieves simply have no morals at all. These crooks have targeted a pet shop. As one of them distracts the owner, the other tries to break into the till. It's locked, but undeterred, he goes for something very different. A pedigree puppy worth £1,000. Straight in his trousers and out the door. Every shoplifter has their favourite target. For 23-year-old casual shoplifter Carla, it's clothes. This one, I stole. I stole this. It's cost like £60 and I managed to steal it. I can't remember where I got this from, but I stole it. I think I stole these as well. The stuff that I steal would be clothes, shoes, underwear. I think about 30% of the clothes I got are stolen. Thieves know there's one place they'll always be able to operate without store detectives looking on, the changing rooms. They'd be as brazen as select clothing and go into the changing rooms and pull it on as if it was their own and walk out of it wearing it. We're not allowed to follow anybody into the changing rooms. We've just got to take note of what they actually go in with and what they actually come out with. This thief takes things one step further. She enters the changing room with a handful of clothes. Moments later, she returns with just one blouse. But now, miraculously, she's six months pregnant. I'd try and make it so it looked like I had three leather jackets, but I'd have six, yeah? So I'd go in the changing rooms, put three on, yeah? Put my baggy coat on over the top, yeah? But take three out with me so I had something to hang back up. So if you can get out of the shop with free coats, it's £150 for half an hour's work. It's good money. While Carl can make £150 in half an hour, professional shoplifter Christian can earn ten times that if he targets the right stores. Yeah, it's expensive. Expensive street. Maybe it's the most expensive street, I don't know. Expensive shops for the rich people. To look for for the most expensive thing just have a look on the prices the most expensive thing this is that that's what you want to think yeah, if just one item five thousand pounds jacket you can sell it with fifteen hundred two thousand so that's a lot of money professionals come out on a daily day basis and they are brilliant at what they do now we have to be two steps ahead of them. The professional often steals in bulk. Like this thief, 15 coats in a matter of seconds. It's the professional if you want, because you can always go for your crackhead, smackhead, and everything like that. But it's the professional with heating it can do in thousands of pounds worth of goods in, out, done, and gone. The problem, though, is bulky items like clothes are hard to conceal. In Bristol, this thief's gone for a small, high-value item instead. Bracelets. It's easy to conceal. It's small and discreet, literally. If it fit in your hand and you can hide it or shield it in your hand, pretty much, it's, it, that hand goes straight into the pocket or bag. Makeup's one of the easiest. You can just stick it in your pockets, pull up your sleeve, pull down your bra. It's kind of a good trick, like, I'll be like, like that, looking at the shelf, 
and then I'm, I'll, I'll flick it and it will go down my sleeve. So, yeah, it's quite a nifty trick. Straight away, all, all, all these shaving foams, all your hand creams, your, your, your aftershave, it's basically your health and beauty section that people want every day. They know that we can easily sell this and then that is the end of it. David shoplifted for more than a decade and when it came to stealing small, expensive items, his favourite target was perfume. $34.99 there for, a, I think, a 50ml bottle. You get, you get 20 quid for that all day long. If it's sought after and people can't get it and people want it, they'll, they'll pay the shoplifter to go and get it for half the price. The perfume aisles are one of the most vulnerable places in a shop. Who would look twice at an old lady browsing them? But this one doesn't want to pay. After conferring with a friend, she goes in for a second hit. The shop assistant distracted. Another bottle goes in the bag. Which is why experienced store detectives like Kelly keep an especially close eye on the cosmetic section. Expensive moisturisers, um, usually find one that near the front door, they've usually got tags on, especially if they're in the bad area. Obviously the staff around, it's, it's lit really brightly, and um, the CCTV. This would be an area where I wouldn't want to conceal or, or steal any perfume at all. Small and high value often means high tech. But here, modern security measures finally put off seasoned shoplifter Darren. Cameras, the new iPads, you know, tablets, um, PCs. It's just the point that's going into that shop. Absolutely pointless. It's nice to look at, but there's no stealing from there. It just wouldn't happen. As this guy proves, the security wins. Embarrassed, he gives up. Unlike this shoplifter, who tries to run. With security in electronic shops so tight, shoplifters often get hold of mobiles by other means. There's only one unguarded phone in this shop, the shop assistants. A quick look about. And the phone's gone. When it comes to making quick money, there's one high-value item that shoplifters like to steal more than any other. Spirits, champagne, uh, brandies, vodka. A lot of people, they, they want the high life for a cheap price. If I could get uh, four bottles of whiskey, which is quite easy to do out in a store, take them, four of them, and you're out of there, you know, you've got 40 quid straight away. You know, you can get quite a decent amount of drugs for 40 quid. I would see have stolen altogether about a good three to four hundred bottles of wine in two years. I would always look at the percentages and get the strongest, but that's because I was bad on the drink. Alcohol may give a shoplifter courage, but it gives the store detectives an advantage. If you come in drunk to a store, you're not really worried about who's around you or you're not in a state of mind to register that there could be a store detective stood right next to you. This lady looks like she might have had a couple already, but she isn't going to give up or pay for it either. Body language is obvious straight away because she's opening that a top before she's even picked up the item. They think they've concealed something in a good way. In their mind, they've concealed it. Nobody's seen them, but obviously... <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss that, can you? In Newcastle, Darren knows only too well the consequences of trying to steal when drunk. I drank that much alcohol that I didn't really care and I, and I thought I was invisible. I just come across, you didn't walk out with two bottles, even though I'd seen, the security guard had, had seen us. I just walked out of there and um, the bottle fell out of my coat and the security guard grabbed us and, and he was kind of... He had us down here on the floor while I was trying to escape. And uh, it was just 
just an awful situation, you know, that day. Um, but I'm bored from there now. Can I go back in? Can I go back in? But alcoholics like Darren aren't the only people driven by desperation. In recent years, another type of thief has joined the battle on Britain's high streets. Struggling to get a job or pay the bills, more and more people are turning to shoplifting to get by. People that are desperate are getting bread, milk, sugar, little bits to just tide them over until they get their benefits or, or they get their wages. I got nicked for shoplifting uh, food in Tesco's last year. Needed the food because we didn't have any money. It weren't for to sell in or anything like that. It was just to, to steal to eat. Since the recession, that there's a lot more people shoplifting that way before. Um, obviously, because the, there's a lot less money out there, um, they can't afford the mortgages and stuff like that. So the, there's a lot more crime, there's a lot more shoplifting going on. Where there's demand, the shoplifters are always ready to pounce. The new battlefield is in the food aisles. They'll come in with a bag and they'll fill it up with beef joints. That's what they're doing, they try to leave the store. I caught my first coffee thief last week. Again, need. What do they need? Oh, I need a joint of beef for Sunday. Yes, not a problem, I can go and get it. There's never enough goods you could sell. All year round, it's, it's meat, it's, it's groceries, it's food. Demand far outweighs the supply of, of anything I could steal. Here you go, you got cheese, you got meats and stuff like that, OK? Straight in the basket handfuls of it you see literally that they don't just select one item and pull it in I might get in my hand it's a quick tenner quick 20 quid like that bang coming up who comes out on top when detectives and lifters go head to head if they could get away with security say by stabbing him or something they'd do it the threat of gangs if you're on your own that's something like that would it is pretty scary and how exclusion zones and jail mark the end of the road for some. To be honest with you right now, the cameras are probably following us as we speak. If I enter any shop that I'm not meant to, I'll go to jail. Shoplifting in the UK has reached its highest level in nine years. And it's getting harder and harder for the store detectives to keep it under control. It's getting a lot more violent than what it used to be. Back then, people never used to use knives and stuff like that as much. I sort of wake up every morning thinking I'm going to get a slap today, purely for the fact that then you don't want to let your guard down. They can just turn at the, the split second. As soon as someone grabbed hold of me like that, it was either shout, I'm pregnant, get off you straight away, they've got to then get wrong and if not I would chuck that I would just push them off anything to get away from security anything that's what they do anything if they could get away with security say by stabbing him or something they would do it I had a shoplift there um, I, brought him into, I brought him into the security office um, I've asked him out to empty his pockets he's, he's actually come at me with a needle next thing you know I'm getting stabbed in like my back my neck my cheek Everything happens so fast that you just don't think about it. You just go in and do the job and deal with the consequences later. And those violent consequences can be far worse when shoplifters hunt in packs. These men were caught trying to lift a pair of shoes. But they weren't going to let a shop assistant stop them getting away. They're the worst ones. Um, basically, they'll use violence um, to get what they want. Um, they'll come in mob-handed. Um, and basically, they'll just threaten anybody who tries to go after them. We'd given chase, ended up down an alleyway that was cut off. They'd got the rest of the gang in the alleyway that decided to jump in. So it was basically a fight for all at that point. And I had half my face kicked in. There's an even more dangerous phenomenon taking hold on Britain's streets. The mob shoplifting spree. In North London, this gang descend en masse. Wasting no time, helping themselves to whatever they like.
stunned, the staff respond bravely. Someone's gone in their case to join. They've targeted that guy because they obviously know he's going to be vulnerable. But ultimately, the staff were helpless as the gang fought back. There's not a lot you could do in that situation. You're not a one-man show that you're going to just clothesline all these other people or try and detain as many as possible because then the mob just turns on you. So again, the stock can be recovered, you can't at the end of the day. If that was my store, probably emotions and anger going through. This London gang got away with it. But across Britain, streetwise store detectives, armed with cameras and other technology, feel they are catching up with the thieves. Right now, the, the cameras are probably following as we speak. It's because uh, I'm a sector target, which means as soon as I'm targeted in Newcastle by either a camera, a security guard, a policeman, then, the, then the, the cameras will follow us, you know, wherever I go in the city. One thing every shoplifter knows is eventually their luck will run out. In this game of cat and mouse, the store detectives almost always have the last laugh. You let them walk out the door five seconds away from the store, they think they've got away with it, then you pounce. Everybody gets caught. Look, look, everybody. The last time I stole from here, it was a few months ago, I actually got away. I got around to the library, which is about 200 yards away. I went into a toilet, took out the razor blades. About 60 seconds later, a big bang on the door, the security guard had followed us and arrested us in the library. That shows how good the security is. The clock was on CCTV. They just had a big picture of me with the goods, what I'd pinched, with the basket in my hand, caught red-handed. Ashley's now so well known that if she puts one foot wrong, she'll end up in serious trouble. If I enter any shop that I'm not meant to, I'll go to jail. So it's not worth it. It's simply not worth it. The relentless pressure has meant it's the end of the road for some. When you commit an offence and you get away with it, you've never got away with it. Because you never know. You never know if someone's going to come knocking on your door in six months' time. I feel fantastic now that I'm free from it all. It's a, it's a, it's a very fear-filled way of living because there's a lot of emotions going on at the same time. There's fear, there's desperation, there's anxiety. Always thinking, always watching out the peripheral of your eyes, you know, of sudden movements, slower movements by members of the public, by security, by cameras moving. It's a really draining way to live your life, you know. But not every shoplifter sees it like Darren. There will always be those prepared to take the risk. If they call me, I'll say, oh, you know what? Yes, I did steal from your shop. What will they do? They'll ban me from the shop. That's fine. There's thousands of other shops I could go to. There'll always be shoplifters, as long as there's stores, department stores. They'll stop them in different ways, but they'll all they'll be clever shoplifters that always get around the alarm systems, no matter what. Shoplifters stop thieving. Never. There'll always be a shoplifter out there. Well, it takes a thief to catch a thief, and that's exactly what we're doing this week. Don't miss the new series Thursday at 8. And the fight against crime keeps on coming tonight. Rav Wilding is catching criminals live as law and disorder continues. That's new and next.